An often overlooked category of corals is the gorgonians. They include both photosynthetic and non-photosynthetic sea fans, as well as sea whips, that grow in kind of a corkscrew shape. What sets them apart from other corals is the presence of a protein called gorgonin. Gorgonin gives the gorgonian a distinct leathery texture that's kind of hard to describe. It's similar to some soft corals to the touch, but it's more rigid and gummy, as if it were made of cartilage. This consistency allows the gorgonian to blow back and forth in strong surges while maintaining its fan-like shape. In the Caribbean, photosynthetic gorgonians can be found almost everywhere blowing back and forth, and many of these colonies grow to giant sizes. The coloration of the Caribbean sea fans tend to be a bit more muted. Mainly, one would find various shades of purple, pink, and cream. In the Pacific, there are far more non-photosynthetic varieties that come in more boisterous colors, such as red, yellow, blue, and even some that are rainbow in color. The problem with these is that non-photosynthetic part. Non-photosynthetic corals in general are a challenge to keep alive because they require regular feeding for proper nutrition. Filter feeding non-photosynthetic corals are particularly challenging because of the sheer quantity of food that they require. In the wild, they have access to practically a continuous supply of food in the water column, something that's practically impossible to reproduce on the hobby scale. If you're looking to add a gorgonian to your reef aquarium, here are some practical tips. First, consider a photosynthetic specimen from the Atlantic rather than a non-photosynthetic specimen from the Pacific. The level of difficulty between the two, it's basically worlds apart. Second, be prepared to provide strong flow. In the wild, you'd be amazed by how much back and forth surge gorgonians receive. I personally like wave devices such as the Tunzi wave box that can create a nice, slow, back and forth surge. Third, whether you end up with a photosynthetic or non-photosynthetic sea fan, make an attempt to feed it. There's now several manufacturers that make dry powder foods that are tailored to gorgonian nutrition. Now I've not tried all of them out but hopefully a mix of a few brands will be the key to healthy sea fans in the future. The last bit of advice assumes for a second that you took the first bit of advice and got a photosynthetic gorgonian. Give those guys plenty of light. They're found in very shallow water and receive intense lighting during the day in the wild. Hopefully this quick video was helpful for you guys considering sea fans for your reef tank. They provide some really cool aesthetics and you can even make a Caribbean themed tank with these. If you have further questions about them, post them in the comments below. Until next time guys, happy reefing.